to become aware of the minutest details in each moment is a feat not easily conquered. <laughs> However, if you could harness the power of each moment and become more aware of the gifts that, the, that are manifesting in front of your very eyes, you would be blown away by the manifestations that you miss on a daily basis. And even as I bring this up now, you might be saying to yourself, I don't miss things like that. I'm way too observant. I know that I waver in and out of that way of thinking. And, you know, on better days, I allow myself to be my true authentic self. And I observe things without any attachment to the outcome. And when I'm successful doing this, <laughs> I may not immediately register what I'm witnessing, but shortly thereafter, I can have an aha moment where I say to myself that I just witnessed an instant manifestation. <laughs> Let me give you an example of what happened a couple of days ago on my birthday. I was walking from the Ventura Pier to the restroom. It was such a beautiful, perfect day. It was sunny and there were these wispy clouds that looked just like angels flying. The pier's a really long pier. It's about a half a mile long. <laughs> and I was observing quite a few people. They were walking, they were fishing. It was such a beautiful Sunday morning. And so there was this family of five walking in front of me and they were walking a, a red-haired golden doodle. You know, and it's one of those things that we often see is we're on the pier doing a lot of fishing, is people walking their dogs on the pier, even though there are signs on every single pier that prohibits pets on the pier. And so I was thinking to myself, I guess the reason that they don't allow pets on the pier is just in case, you know, the animal has to poop. Ew, I really don't want to see that again. I've seen it before on the piers. <laughs> no sooner did I have that thought than the dog squatted right in front of me and pooped. <laughs> Luckily, the owner had a bag and picked it up, but left me wondering that when I took 10 more steps in front of me, was I going to catch the after whiff of fresh dog poop? <laughs> oh, vomit. <laughs> so, I hurriedly walked past them, holding my breath, quickly raising my heart rate a little more than normal, my normal lally-gagging pace. <laughs> but I just didn't want to gag. So, ten more steps ahead, I regained my glorious feeling, feeling the breeze and breathing in the fresh air, listening to the waves crashing, feeling peaceful and content. And it hit me. Bam! I just witnessed my own instant manifestation. How many of us would have been oblivious or too distracted to recognize what happened? Would we be busy focusing ourselves to the outcome of an observation by attaching our thoughts to the maybe the wrongness of walking a pet on the pier? Or would we take it to the next level by justifying in our own minds why we just had that thought? See what happens when people break the rules. It's just so rude or discourteous that people do not think about the other people enjoying the beer. <laughs> or would we quickly dismiss it as just one of those oblivious things that people do and not give it another thought? It's a continuation of the message I was receiving my whole birthday weekend. Do you approach everyday encounters or observations with the mindset of seeing the glass half full or half empty? Do you at least acknowledge the thought processes you are having without judgment on yourself and pat yourself on the back for realizing that the universe was manifesting exactly what you were thinking about because you were a vibrational match to your thoughts. The universe manifests the desires of our thoughts as instant gifts all the time. 
An opportunity arises to manifest a desire when the vibrational frequency being emitted from the thinker and the setting are perfect for the manifestation. The universe grants the gift to the thinker because the thinker must desire it if they're thinking about it that much. The universe doesn't look at anything as good or bad. It only sees the dominant vibrational frequency as a wanted desire, and it's delighted to gift it to us. The thing is, we would recognize this very basic but magical manifestation process happening in front of our very eyes all the time and see it as the glass half full, with the glass with an unlimited capacity to never reach full, because it's endlessly overflowing with the gifts of your desires. Or do you see the glass as half empty, not recognizing your gifts and say to yourself, I don't think that seeing dog poop was a gift at all. Totally missing the point that you got what you desired, period. If we were to recognize this one simple concept, the universe is always gifting us the desires of our minds by matching our vibrational frequency output, our thoughts, whether you view it as a good thing or a bad thing, because it is your free choice how you feel about it. My suggestion to you is to stop seeing it as either a bad or a good thing. Start seeing it as the indication of how the universe interpreted your non-resistant desired thought. I recognize what my desired thought was. <laughs> I hope I don't see this dog poop on the pier. But I was chuckling inside, remembering my last incident on how bizarrely funny it was. And no sooner did I think that thought than it manifested because my thought was non-resistant. I recognize it is a gift from the universe, a gift given to me because I matched my own desire with no resistance. The gift is always present, but it's only a gift if you recognize it as one. Imagine always being able to recognize your gifts. Realizing what you're giving your thoughts to can be the most magical, powerful energy that you can harness. It's the power of being united with your true authentic self and allowing the flow of universal energy to flow in your life to create the life you've always dreamed of. The life where you're free to be, have, or do anything that you desire. You can do this by consciously observing your thoughts from a bystander's point of view, one with no attachments to the outcome, and instead instantly switch your focus on your daydream or your desire of your heart and imagine yourself throughout your day wondering what you would be doing if you were in the scene of your daydream right that very moment. If the thought makes you smile, then relish the thought a bit longer and fill in a few more enjoyable details to the picture in your mind and really notice how it makes you feel inside. Do you get lost in the dream, creating scenarios that you might in maybe encounter or people you would meet on your journey? Sights that you would be seeing for the first time? Physicality, colors, sounds, music, smells, smells of the aromas of the Italian food you'd be enjoying and feeling joyous around the pleasant local vibes of the people doing what they love by showing gratitude for the simple pleasures in life, like enjoying great food, family style, and sharing music and laughter while enjoying life in the moment. <laughs> oh, I see. I got caught up in my own daydream of Shell's world. You get the picture though, don't you? If you train yourself to be aware of your thoughts by recognizing the triggers in your body, triggers like stress or that pit feeling in your stomach or fearful thoughts, angry thoughts, sad thoughts, or any thoughts that make you feel fear, shame, or guilt. I know that's a lot to ask, but as I explained in the beginning, 
that the universe cannot distinguish a good thought from a bad thought. It can only read the vibrational frequency you emit while thinking the thought. And if you can catch yourself each time you come across a thought that triggers one of the list of above and replace that thought with a thought from your daydream, then you can start creating situations in your everyday life that when you're in a non-resistant state of happiness because of your daydream thoughts, and then you come into a situation where the vibrational frequency is the same as what you're feeling and what you're thinking, then voila, a magical manifestation moment is in the making. And this is exactly how my wonderful birthday weekend happened in the first place, which takes me full circle to the meaning of this blog. When you start to recognize your worthiness, realize that you deserve the best. You deserve to receive what you desire. You don't have to prove your worthiness or justify your worthiness to anyone. You just need to stay focused on what you truly desire and keep it in the forefront of your mind as much as possible and it can't help but to manifest for you. I knew I deserved to have a great adventure on my birthday because I'm a gypsy adventurer at heart. And my best friend was in the same receptive mode of wanting to give me my heart's desires. So he gave me this gift of a day and an evening doing the things we both love to do in a luxurious setting without worrying about a single thing other than enjoying, enjoying ourselves. If we learn to be patient with ourselves and stop being judgmental about our thoughts and the things we observe, then we can focus more on staying even-tempered, peaceful, content, and keeping tabs on our thinking and feeling. That way we can consciously think and manifest the things we want and enjoy the journey along the way. <laughs> because the universe will be joyously gifting us the desires of our minds and hearts and we'll be joyously receiving them. And that's the name of the game. Love and light, my friends. <laughs>